Symphony of the Seas is an Oasis-class cruise ship with Royal Caribbean. Its maiden voyage was in April of 2018. Its length is 1,184 feet. Its max beam is 215 feet. Its height is 238 feet. It is a 228,000 gross ton cruise ship with a cruising speed of 22 knots. Symphony has a capacity of 5,518 at double capacity and a crew of 2,200. I hope you enjoy this deck-by-deck -deck tour of Symphony of the Seas. It is Cruise Fever here, and we had a chance to go on the inaugural cruise of Symphony of the Seas out of Miami. In this video, we're going to go deck-by-deck, deck, starting at the top decks and working our way down in what is currently the world's largest cruise ship. There are three water slides on Symphony of the Seas. Together, they are known as the Perfect Storm. You go up a spiral staircase, as you can see right there on your right, uh, to get to the top there. One of the water slides, as you see, ends in what's called a champagne bowl, where you swirl around a few times, then go down another tunnel, which ends in a splash. And the other two are kind of racing water slides. Water slides are usually open from 9 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. There are three good-sized pools on the pool deck of Symphony of the Seas. Right here is the main pool with a whirlpool on each side of it. Plenty of loungers all around. This is in the forward side of the ship, and across the way on the starboard side is the beach pool. The beach pool has loungers that have the water from the pool kind of go right up to it from the, uh, the first or second row of loungers. On a ship with over 5,000 people, one concern can be loungers being available, especially on a sea day. But because of the layout, there's a lot of loungers on deck 16 as well, right above the pool deck. So it uh, wasn't really a, uh, an issue on the ship. This is the sports pool where they would play water volleyball and other sports or just a regular pool. Uh, there are lifeguards on duty, by the way, when the pools are open. This is Splash Away Bay, the kid area. And if you go up one deck from the pool deck to deck 16, that is where you will find the Windjammer, the buffet on Symphony of the Seas, a nice hand washing station there. Plenty of free drinks available, like lemonade and flavored water. That was either strawberry, they had mango flavor some days. And those Coke machines are for those with the beverage package. You can get your own uh, sodas right from the machine there. Because of the many food options on Symphony of the Seas, the buffet didn't really seem that crowded. Here we have Mongolian Corner, where you pick out what meats and vegetables you want and they'll cook it right in front of you and you can see some of the other selections from the buffet here. From the back of the buffet, you can see the sports deck. We're gonna look at that in just a minute, but first, while we're on deck 16, we're gonna go forward just a little bit and look at hooked seafood. This dining option overlooks the solarium. It costs about $40 per person. It has kind of a New England style seafood, a uh, casual environment as you see here, but a really nice clean layout. And there you see the solarium, which we're gonna look at in more detail in just a bit. And we're back to the sports deck and here you see the really nice mini golf area on the ship that was pretty busy throughout. They did a really good job with the design of the mini golf, but you always have great views from this area as well all around you. And right next to that, we have the zip line. Make sure you check your cruise compass to know what times it's open. I believe it closes before supper just about every day. There are two flow riders on Symphony of the Seas, one on each side. One is for bodyboarding, as you see here, and the other side is for uh, the stand-up variety. They do have lessons, even private lessons, if you'd like to pay a little extra to hone your craft and get really good at flow riding. A lot of people just enjoy sitting in the bleachers they have there and uh, enjoying the free show as well. There is a place to get something to drink between the flow riders for those hot days. It can get really hot up there on the sports deck. And uh, right now we're going to look at the ultimate abyss, the waterless slide on Symphony of the Seas. It is a lot of fun. You get in those mats and you slide all the way down 10 stories. And they've added some lights and sounds as you go down to make it even more exciting. So it is a lot of fun to try. And it's, it's a lot more fun than taking the elevator from the sports deck all the way down to the boardwalk. So try the ultimate abyss. The basketball court or sports court was always pretty busy during the cruise. They have basketball, of course, and soccer and dodgeball. Just make sure you wear sneakers. You can't wear flip-flops or be barefoot on the court. El Loco Fresh is a free dining option. It's right next to all the fun stuff on the sports deck that's open for breakfast and lunch. They have tacos, burritos, quesadillas, 
Um, you get chips and, and uh, queso, and they have all kinds of desserts that you see here. And they also have a little station where you can make your own dip with some pico de gallo and guacamole. Um, really enjoyed this, this dining option on Symphony. Have a few ping pong tables right outside of the teen area. And this is the living room for teens. They have some gaming and other things that they can do there. There's fuel right next to it. It's kind of behind it. I don't really have any shots of that but it's in the same area of the ship right near the sports court. There are two arcades on Symphony of the Seas. There's another one on the boardwalk, but this is the larger one right on the sports deck there on deck 15. By the way, on either side of this, there are two ice cream stations. Right outside the arcade, these vending machines allow you to get pretty much anything that you forgot, lotion, toothpaste, sunscreen. You can use it with your card or my watch that you can get for $5. I'll talk about that in a minute as well. You can also charge your phone, type in a little code, charge it, it doesn't cost anything. And so you can come back after swimming or whatever and your phone's fully charged. These are the iconic cantilevered whirlpools on either side of the ship. Tons of room, um, just beautiful views from here. And now we're gonna check out the solarium forward on the ship. You do have to be 16 years or older to be in the solarium, so many adults appreciate that, so you can get some peace and quiet. It is a large, spacious, beautiful solarium. That artwork there you see in the middle is called the Big Wonder. It is beautiful in the day and at night. You have two whirlpools above, and then you have, uh, halfway down the steps, you have another beautiful whirlpool or hot tub, and this has the, the glass walls, so you even underwater, I guess. <laughs> If you want to hold your breath, you can still appreciate the views. Nice waterfall underneath it. And like I said, plenty of loungers. It's always nice and warm and quiet. One of my favorite parts of the ship. On either side of the solarium, you have an area where you can walk outside. And that little platform goes out over the side of the ship so you can really see the ship a little bit better and take in the views. And this part, you can look down over the ocean floor and see how high up you actually are. And again, at night, you can see just how beautiful the solarium is. The Solarium Bistro is on deck 15, offers healthy, conscious dining. Uh, most of it's free. There are some extra charges for lobster tail and things, but it's free for breakfast and lunch and for dinner. Just get a reservation. The attire here is smart, casual, kind of has a spa type atmosphere, but you have great views day or night from Solarium Bistro. And there is an escape room on Symphony of the Seas. Make sure you get a reservation. You have to be at least 14 years old in order to enter as well. And this is the card room or library where a lot of people will play games. Uh, you can use a computer to check your email or get on the internet as well. They also have some Sudoku and trivia for some of our cerebral cruisers. And right outside of that is the community bulletin board where you can post an announcement. Wonderland is a really creative idea by Royal Caribbean. It is an Alice in Wonderland inspired restaurant that has foods created with molecular gastronomy that look incredible and imaginative and you could see just by the decor uh, of the restaurant itself that it just feels like you are Alice in Wonderland. Mm -hmm. It does cost extra but uh, I, I highly encourage you to try it out at least one night on your cruise. We're going to move down a few more decks but I wanted to show you some of the artwork in the stairwell. Every stairwell has a unique piece and uh, just really interesting art. And uh, the elevators on one side, you have these inspiring words and these acrylic bubbles. On the other side, you have these kites that are all stitched together. Really enjoy the artwork throughout the ship that we'll talk about in a bit. Uh, even this piano player in an elevator, a very unexpected thing that everybody got a kick out of. Dazzles is known for its dance floor on Symphony of the Seas. At night, you'll see a lot of activities going on in here, from pop to swing, all kinds of music. And it has a great view of the boardwalk from that large window. We are on deck eight now and we're gonna walk through Central Park where all these plants that you see, the trees and bushes and flowers, they are all real. There are over 20,000 tropical plants, each in their own little individual bins. The irrigation system on this thing has got to be just incredible. Here you see the living wall on either side of the ship. Uh, just a totally relaxing, enjoyable part of the ship. You have some restaurants on either side and there's a few retail shops as well. Even some live music at night to just enjoy this open air space. And this little time lapse walking through Central Park at night gives you an idea of just how beautiful it is at nighttime. Now we're going to take a look at some of the restaurants that you can find along Central Park. 
Uh, this one is Chops Grill. This is the steakhouse on Symphony of the Seas. The cost is $49 per person. I believe it's 20 or 25 uh, for lunch, uh, but some really great cuts of meat that you can get from Chops Grill. 150 Central Park is an upscale restaurant along Central Park. It does cost $49 per person as well. You could go back and look at that menu if you want to see what kind of selections are offered. Jamie's Italian is the casual Italian restaurant on board Symphony. It does cost $35 for dinner and $25 for lunch. The dinner menu does have a few more options and you can eat outside if you'd like. Vintages is the wine bar right off of Central Park. Park Cafe is a great place to grab a quick breakfast or lunch. At lunchtime, you see they have salads there and even cuts of meat. At breakfast, you can grab a bagel or a donut, um, all kinds of cereals, and uh, just a really relaxing uh, cafe. They do have plenty of outdoor seating as well if you want to just enjoy the fresh air while you have your lunch or breakfast. We're now moving down to deck number six where there is Vitality at Sea, the spa and fitness center. Vitality Cafe offers some healthy choices for food and smoothies. And then right across from that is the Salon on Symphony of the Seas. And if you do book a massage or treatment, you do have to go down these stairs where there's another desk. And this is also where the thermal suite is. You'll see here these heated loungers. Uh, you don't have much of a view, just kind of this floral wall but uh, your eyes will be closed anyway, probably. There's a rain shower, and there's a steam room and a dry sauna in the thermal suite. There is an extra cost to use this area, and there are a limited number of slots they will sell. And this is the relaxation room where you're going to be before your treatment while you wait to be called on. There's uh, some fresh water, and this is one of the treatment rooms for couples. And here we'll take a look at one of the changing rooms that's right off of the spa. Now we're going to take a look at the fitness center. It is on deck six and closes at 1 a.m. each day. So a little bit of extra time after the day to get a little workout in before you go to sleep. You can see from these videos that there's a ton of room, a lot of equipment. There's a spinning room right there. We've got some free weights as well. Just a large open space for the fitness center. And I love that there's easy access to the jogging track from the fitness center. Just go down these stairs and the jogging track is right there. Now we're gonna go to the aft part of deck number six and check out the boardwalk on Symphony. This part of the ship has a kind of Coney Island feel to it. There are inward facing balconies that you can get and uh, noise might be a little bit of an issue depending what time of day or what kind of sleeper you are but keep that in mind you can also get inward facing balconies on central park as well i should have mentioned the dog house is this is a free place to get a hot dog or a sausage anytime you want you can also ride the carousel as often as you would like there's no extra cost for using that playmakers is the sports bar right off the boardwalk there You'll see uh, great places to watch the game, and this is the other part of the arcade that I was talking about earlier. These little shuffleboard uh, tables don't cost anything to use, and as you can see, a lot of big TVs for watching the games as well. Johnny Rockets is the iconic 50s diner and burger joint. Costs about $7 uh, cover charge there. Get a burger, fries, and a drink. They do play music from the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and of course they have an outside area to eat as well, so you can people watch and uh, check out the boardwalk while you eat. You can head over to Sugar Beach if you got to get your sugar fix. They have tons of candy of all different kinds, and they also have some uh, unique ice cream flavors there too. They do have a retail store right there on the boardwalk, and right next to that is a little area for kids to climb and get some energy out. So from the very back of the boardwalk, we're looking up at Ultimate Abyss, the slide that goes all the way down, and we're going to take a look at Aqua Theater. On either side of Aqua Theater, you have a 43-foot rock climbing wall uh, with different kinds of routes, depending on how challenging you want your climb to be. It is free to use, by the way. 
Oasis-class ships like Symphony of the Seas have the Aqua Theater and some of the most incredible shows that you can experience at sea. And it really is an experience. You can see they're diving from these 30-foot platforms and these shows have acrobatics and these, these amazing feats along with the fountains and the synchronized music. It's just a really fun thing to do. So you want to make sure you get a reservation. Uh, it's free to, to see the shows, but you want to get a reservation to make sure you can get a good seat. If you forgot to get a reservation or they all filled up, still show up 10 minutes before the show and they'll start letting people in to any open seats. So I just put together a little montage of some of the different things that were seen uh, during one of the shows so you can check it out for yourself. We're now down on deck number five. We're going to check out Royal Theater, where some of the shows take place. These are offered, by the way, for no extra charge. Uh, but again, you want to make sure you have a reservation if you want to make sure you have a good seat. They have shows like Hairspray and Flight, and I have some clips of each one of those so you can check them out. And Deck 5 is also where we're going to find the promenade, so we're going to check that out and all the lounges and restaurants and, and retail outlets right off of that. The Starbucks does require an extra charge, by the way, but you can get your Starbucks fix while you're on the ship. On Air is where a lot of games took place and trivia. Uh, they had games like 60 Seconds or Less. There was some karaoke that also took place in this part of the ship. Bolero's is the Latin-themed lounge on Symphony. And at nighttime, it is transformed into that very iconic Latin lounge. There are several retail shops along the way off the promenade, so I'm just going to show you a few clips of some of the shops you'll find. Copper and Kettle's uh, Irish pub on board. There's also a lot of live music that takes place in this area. And for pizza, pretty much any time you want it, you could always head by Sorrento's. The pizza is free and included in the fare of your cruise. Most of the time, there wasn't much of a line at all. And even when there was, it, it usually went pretty quickly. I really love this little window they have right outside Sorrento's that shows uh, Venice, and if it's nighttime, it shows a night scene. During the day, you see a daytime scene there. Get a coffee or tea right here at Cafe Promenade. You can also get a specialty coffee, cappuccino, or latte for an extra charge. Uh, donuts and desserts there are free. You can go ahead and book your next cruise right there at Next Cruise. And right next to that is the Bionic Bar, the robot bartenders. Rising Tide Bar is another Oasis class feature, the bar that goes up and down about every half hour or so. It goes up to Central Park and back down to Promenade. In the Promenade, they do have special events uh, like you see here. This was the Anchors Away Street Spectacular. They also have the balloon drop that takes place about midnight, the first or second day of the cruise. We're going to go up one deck just to check out Schooner Bar. In this area, they do have live music that takes place during the day and at night as well. It's a great area just to kind of people watch if we'd like or play a game or read a book. Uh, but you'll see the views from the promenade up here, uh, some of the best views you can get. You might notice a really interesting piece of art there too, the Volkswagen Beetle that's been compressed into a ball, a really intriguing feature on Symphony. And right across the way we have shore excursions and right behind that is Focus where you can buy and look at your pictures. The main dining room on Symphony of the Seas takes up three decks, decks three, four, and five. We have a few shots showing the beautiful chandelier in the middle and just a really elegant dining room.
On deck number four, we have what's called Entertainment Place. It's where you'll find the attic. This is where the comedy shows will take place and also a few art auctions and art seminars take place in this room. Jazz on four is the Jazz Lounge on Symphony. Right next to this is the Diamond Lounge. So it's a little bit lower on this ship, uh, but you can access this lounge from there. Studio B has to be one of my favorite entertainment places on the ship. Uh, this is a, an amazing ice skating show you see here. It starts off with all these drones going around, which took me a while to figure out they were actually drones. But a really wonderful ice skating show. These performers are extremely talented. Did a really good job putting together these productions. They do open the ice rink during the week, so check your cruise compass for those times. During certain parts of the day, the ice skating rink is transformed into a laser tag map. You'll see a little bit of footage of it here. Uh, it's a lot of fun on a cruise ship. It doesn't cost anything extra to play. And just on the other side of the skate rink is Casino Royale. So we'll walk through that area. Izumi is a specialty restaurant, so it does cost extra, but it has a hibachi side, as you see here, and a sushi side. So if you want to get some good Japanese food, check it out. Now we're going to check out the cabin. I had an interior cabin here. You see me using that wristband. Those cost $5. So you could use them in the place of your card for opening doors or making a purchase. Just makes it easy and convenient, especially if you have kids. So uh, I recommend getting one of those, trying it out. So this is room number 7420, an interior room with a virtual balcony. I found the room to be nice and spacious and uh, clean. Of course, it is a, a new ship, but really enjoyed. Uh, one of my favorite interior rooms that I've had so far. So I will let the tour of this cabin continue as I sign off here. Thanks a lot, guys, for watching this video. If you guys like to subscribe, hit that subscribe button. Uh, give us a like if you like this video. If you guys have any questions or comments, uh, about the ship, please let us know in the comment section below.